With the final season of Peaky Blinders coming to Netflix next month, it's the perfect time to talk about its game that came out in 2015, Bloodborne. Now I started this game in 2018 when it was free for users with PlayStation Plus, but after it got finished by the dog, I just gave up and restarted the next year, and once I finished it, I'm like damn, this game was really good. And then I beat it again another two times and did all the Chalice Dungeon bosses in order to platinum it. Now the first thing that this game does so well once you open the doors is establish the setting. Since this is a prequel, Birmingham is a lot nastier and stinkier than how it is in Peaky Blinders, and it isn't called Birmingham because it's actually called Yarnum. And the world is sick for what it's going for. You start off in central Yarnum with your enemies being people with slight deformities, and as you keep playing the game and progressing through the map, they get worse and worse. The Forbidden Woods actually kind of freaked me out a little, because I hate snakes, and seeing these weird mofos turn into snakeheads pissed me off. So I just ran past most of them instead of actually fighting them. And later on in the game, you just got creepy and like eerie enemies once you get to Bergenworth. Like, I don't know what this is supposed to be. And then this thing over here is that thing from Attack on Titan. And you've also got this weird spider boss once you jump into the water. Seeing the progression of the enemies becoming weirder and nastier along with their environment was really cool to see. And there are also some secret areas in the world that are completely optional. Like Kanehurst Castle and Nightmare Frontier both have unique enemies with a boss fight at the end. Amygdala was pretty easy and Martyr Lugarius was a pain, but it's so satisfying when you finally finish him. Which brings me to the reason why this game, like any Souls game, is so enjoyable. And that's the satisfaction of leveling up and being able to defeat the bosses. The feeling of finally ending them after being destroyed is so sick. Now first playthrough, the boss that got me in the most amount of pain was Viker Amelia because she kept healing, but eventually I realized that the Hunter's Axe was a really poor weapon against her. Once I used the Blades of Mercy, she was really easy. But I think after 3 playthroughs, the enemy I found to be the most difficult and satisfying was either- Okay, so spoiler alert. For the next 10 seconds, I'm going to be talking about a spoiler, so just skip past the next 5 or 10 seconds if you want to avoid the spoiler. But the most rewarding and most difficult boss from my experience was either German or Martyr Logarius. Logarius had that nice ass setting at the top of the castle, and German was a sick final boss depending on the ending. But with both these bosses, once you learn their movements, master every dodge and parry, making that final blow on them is super satisfying. Some of the other bosses are extremely easy like the Witch and Celestial Emissary, but I wouldn't really say they're bad bosses, cause they're one of those puzzle type bosses. The most overrated boss though in terms of difficulty is Abrietis. She's the boss I died to the least along with the witch. I think I died once to the witch cause I didn't know about her one shot attack or I just had low vitality and I was cocky so I ended up killing myself. But with Abrietis I killed her the second try. First try I died when she used that one shot move and second try I killed her when I used the summon. Now I know some hardcore from software enthusiasts are in rage right now and they're probably seeing me as some sort of war criminal. But I only did it for this boss. I heard it was going to take me ages to beat so I spawned the summon second attempt and I beat her. No, I definitely don't think she's the easiest boss or anything, but I don't think she's the hardest boss either. I think she's somewhere in the middle. The worst boss though without a doubt is Mikolash. This man is easily the worst boss I've fought in the entire Soul series. Now I know Dark Souls 2 haters are even angrier than the Ebriettis hardest boss enthusiasts, saying that the 13th, 42nd, and 37th boss from Dark Souls 2 is worse than Mikolash, but I actually haven't played Dark Souls 2, so I can't comment on that. I only played Dark Souls 3 and I'm currently playing Elden Ring, but from the Souls games I've played, he's easily the worst boss. There is one enemy arguably worse than Elden Ring, but that's for another video. But this man is the most annoying and frustrating clown in the entire game. As soon as you walk into the fight, you have this dumb chase sequence where you can barely hit him. But once he finally stops, he brings you to the first arena, where the fight is actually fair and decent. This fight I don't have an issue with, but when he leaves this arena, heads upstairs and traps himself in that room, he undoubtedly becomes the worst boss. And it's cause of the nasty AoE attack that one shots you. You legit can't do anything to prevent it from hitting you, you just have to be lucky. During my first playthrough I managed to kill him legit, but during my second and third playthrough, I had to cheese him by throwing poison knives from the floor above. Him. I don't know why, but in New Game Plus, this man becomes super unfair to the point where you don't even want to fight him legit. He easily has the worst design in the entire game. The chasing is fine at first, but during multiple attempts, it becomes an unnecessary hassle. He's easily the worst boss and the worst part about the entire game. The other thing that I had an issue with is that the travel time to some of the bosses were sometimes time consuming. The ones that I can remember were the Shadows of Yarnum and Bloodstarved Beast, but there were some other bosses that were pretty bad as well. And at the same time, there were bosses like Cleric Beast and the final bosses that weren't bad. So I don't think it's a huge issue. 
But the last issue that I have with the game is that the game doesn't hold up visually. Even when I played it in 2018, I thought it looked pretty bad, and when I look at it now in 2022, I can say it doesn't hold up. It looks like it can be played on PS3, and even some PS3 games look better than this game. So I just think that this game could have looked a lot better for PS4. But those are really my only issues with the game. Mikolash, the graphics, and the downtime when it comes to fighting some of the bosses. Everything else is sick. The upgrades, the runes, the builds, and all the other features were nice additions to the game. And I think the best additions were the gun and the health regen. The reason why I like the gun way more than the shield is because it actually had more situations where I would use it compared to the shield. Because you can also deal a little bit of damage to the enemy. So sometimes if the enemy has very low health and if I'm about to die, I just spray into them. And with the shield, you can't do that. Instead of dealing a little damage to the enemy, you can absorb less damage, which I find to be really stupid, because you can just dodge and not lose any health at all. So I like the gun more because you can damage the enemy, and it just comes clutch in some situations. At the end of the day, they both serve the same purpose of parrying enemies, but I like the gun's ability to damage enemies more. I found the timing for the parrying to be easier with the guns as well, but I haven't used the shield that much, so I can't really tell. I used it for a couple of bosses in Dark Souls 3, like Pontiff and Gundir, but that's really about it. But the other addition in this game that is sick is the opportunity to get your health back. It's a really nice high risk high reward system and since this game is supposedly a much more aggressive game compared to the previous Souls games, it's a really nice addition because it encourages you to keep attacking instead of playing passive. And on top of that, there's a bunch of upgrades and everything encouraging this playstyle. This game also introduced something called Chalice Dungeons, where you can fight a bunch of bosses that are outside of the main game. And the bosses in there were also really good. I think the fire dog pissed me off the most, but I eventually beat him, and I eventually beat the queen and platinum the game. The game is easy to platinum because it's a souls game, because you're basically just fighting all the bosses and grabbing all the items. So getting the platinum trophy was really easy. Now before getting on to the score, I'll also just mention that the lord of the game is very well praised. Now I'm not a huge fan of the souls lore, but... I'm not saying it's bad, cause it's just not my thing. I play Souls games solely for the gameplay, and if the lore is good, that's great, but if it's complete poo poo, I also don't have an issue with it. But I will say, the way that the game doesn't hold your hand and spoon feed you anything is something I really appreciate. I guess that's something about Souls games in general, but for me, it was cool to see another game that doesn't explain shit to you. They just put you in the game, and you do you. I'm not even gonna try and explain the three different endings, but they were pretty interesting. I think the third ending is the canon ending, where Tommy's ancestor becomes the new CEO of the Hunter's Dream, and Tommy gets ready to fight him in the season finale of the final season. And after seeing the new Doctor Strange movie, we can confirm that Tommy Shelby will be returning along with Zachary Cody from Riverdale to the new God of War game. This will be Tommy's final battle, and I'm more than excited for Ragnarok when it releases. So giving Peaky Blinders the video game a final score, I'ma give it an excellent 0.5. My only complaints are that it aged pretty bad visually, like it's not even 60 frames per second on PS5, and the other thing is that Mikolash is probably the worst boss in the entire series. Other than that though, I think the game is phenomenal. Is it the best Souls game? Maybe. I'm still playing Elden Ring, and so far, I think it's on the same level. But if you want to check out that video, make sure to subscribe, because that video will be out once I finish the game. Be sure to join the 4% of people that are subscribed to the channel so that Doctor Strange and Tommy Shelby can defeat the final boss within the entire multiverse. Future. These lines are exponentially worse than Mikolash and Strange and Tommy really need our help. So make sure to subscribe and like this video so we get the best ending possible. But that's it. Later.